Greetings, everyone, and welcome to a special online event today. It's called Awaken Your Third Eye to Access Your Intuition, Creativity, and Bliss and Become a Living Light for the World. My name is Stephen Dynan. I'm the founder and CEO of The Shift Network, and I'm really delighted and blessed to be here with you, getting to receive a profound activation transmission of third eye consciousness and awareness. And we're going to be diving deep with a teacher named Raja Chowdhury, who's both a spiritual teacher as well as a filmmaker and speaker. He's really now at the forefront of understanding the science of the third eye, and he's bridged a lot of different domains and been a very popular Shift Network teacher over the years. So welcome, Raja. Thank you very much, Stephen. Good to be back after a year. Wonderful to be back here. Wonderful to be back. Yes. And uh, I want to let everybody know right up front that we're going to have a chance to go much deeper in a new program with Raja. You'll hear a little bit about towards the end of the hour. It's called Open Your Third Eye. So Raja, I know that we want to create a really a sacred experience for people today, not just talking about the third eye, but a real genuine activation of it. So I'm wondering if you would begin with a little blessing meditation to get us in all in the right state of mind. Wonderful. I want you to do one thing, everybody. I want you to imagine that just 12 fingers above your nose is a little portal, a little gateway that's going to bring divine bliss and consciousness into you. Can you imagine that? And I want you to gaze up into your third eye and just rub it a little bit. And I'm going to invoke the gurus and Shiva Shakti to come and bless this gathering so that our energy attracts them and pulls them into us. So we look up, gaze up into your third eye and listen to me deeply. I'm Hrim Shrim, I'm Kleem So Hamsa Shiva So Ham Saka Frame. this beautiful mantra which is also the mantra to Ardha Narishwara, the half male, half female form of Shiva and Shakti, because God is genderless and the divine you in your higher self is genderless. And that union occurs up here. And when you gaze up into your third eye, that is the union you are seeing when you open the third eye. So we're asking them to come bless us and all the gurus that have come with them to help us come to this place. Thank hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Well, what a profound and a blessed way to open this hour together. I'm sure we all felt something really beautiful start to activate there. Mm -hmm. So as we dive into this hour together, we're going to cover a lot of science and practice and learn. But at first, I'd love to start with a little bit of your backstory, since you kind of have had an interesting role of bridging different worlds and helping to access the ancient wisdom traditions, but in, in a way that also respects our kind of demands of our modern life. So I'd love to hear a little bit about your journey into opening your third eye and, and accessing these pathways of awakened consciousness. I don't have a backstory that's all about a mystical yogi came and blessed me and I went to the Himalayas. Nothing like that happened to me, unfortunately. I wasn't that lucky. You know, I, I grew up in a normal Indian family, but in West Africa, and I studied and I went to study architecture in London. And while I was in London, I did a lot of martial arts and I did some psychedelics as well. And what happened was that while I was experimenting with all these things, uh, it realized that I was perceiving altered states of consciousness, altered realities that I could not access on my own without the use of medicine or, you know, go into some monastery and study meditation for years. I could not. And so I was dying to find out how to do it without medicine, without, you know, endogenous DMT, as we call it. And how do we open the third eye? How do we experiment with Kundalini? How do we... And so I started taking deep initiations into Kriya Yoga, into Shakti Path, into Raja Yoga in London in the 90s, late 90s. And then I moved to New York in the mid 2000s and, and early 2000s. I make films. I'm a creative director. 
But this parallel world was pulling me, like literally pulling me through the third eye into the other world. And it was fascinating because the more I did it over six, seven years, the more I started to experience states of visionary states, states of experience and feelings in the heart that were wonderful, and also hearing inner sounds and downloading information that was not normally available to me. And then it, it kind of just peaked in 2006. I was in New York on the Upper East Side in my apartment with my dog and I had meditating and this explosion occurred that opened like a thousand suns exploding in my head. So the first state that happened was I had a visionary experience, something visual happened to me. And this is one of the states that what we find with DMT activation that DMT endogenous as well activates the occipital lobe and visionary states. And then I had this immense pouring of consciousness into me that just released bliss in my heart. That's, we call it in Tantra, Madhyama, the middle explosion. And that's sensory, that's feeling, that bliss, like you're, you're being shrouded in a golden cloth. And then you begin to hear this inner sound and when this inner sound comes, it's mantra, and you can actually revive it with use of mantras and things. So I went deep into studying after that, and my life changed from 2006 onwards. And, and here I am today teaching this to the world and trying to share the mantra part, the, the kriya part, and the tantric part of opening your third eye. Mm. Well, it's, a, it's a fascinating backstory. And I know that now you're doing some really interesting research on the science of this as well and understanding yes. from a neurobiological perspective as well. It'd be good to get a bit of that in here. So when you, when you think of meditative concepts like mindfulness or vipassana, we are getting to a state of tranquility, of stillness, where we seem to be able to control our thoughts our, and perceive, become the observer, become a witness. What mantra does, when you add mantra to that dimension of meditation, it creates intention. It creates uh, ripples in the, the waves of time. So you're kind of inducing a new state into time that would not normally be there. So a mantra, like for example, Shreem, activates a kind of golden energy all around you and improves your feeling of dopamine in the heart. You feel good. You start generating serotonin, so you feel better about life. So I was very keen to look at how we could measure that. And I'm setting up a partnership with the SEMA lab in the Center for Consciousness Studies in the uh, University of Arizona with Dr. Jade Sanguinetti. And, and we're going to be working on the effect of mantra because his lab is working on using mindfulness from Buddhism to go into deep states with ultrasound technology. So imagine being able to go into deep meditative states in five minutes using ultrasound. Now, they're working on that. What we're trying to do is to see if we add mantra to that, different types of mantras, different Sanskrit mantras, maybe even Kabbalistic mantras, what kind of effects happen to the brain, to the blood chemistry, to the MRI, and we'll start to look at that. So we are beginning to work on that. It's really exciting. It's like uh, the experimentation going on in psychedelics, in psilocybin, in LSD, and, and all over the world. We'll be doing it with sound, and that's going to be really exciting, you know? Very exciting. Sometimes people can have a fear that if they're going to open the third eye, they can become ungrounded or destabilized in their daily life. But you have an approach to this that's really um, working from the bottom up, if you will, so that you're really doing so in a safe and grounded way. The part of the Kundalini Shakti is one of starting always with earth. And the symbol of earth, for all of you have seen this symbol, is the elephant god Ganesh. I mean, just think of this big fat elephant, half elephant, half human sitting on the ground and sitting still. Now, why? Because we want to be grounded in the earth before the door opens to higher consciousness. We want a partner, an elephant who can barge through and help us take us to the other side. And we want to kind of remove all the obstacles. What does an elephant do? It crushes all the obstacles along the way, crush, 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 and gets rid of all your trauma, your shadows, everything gets removed. So what we do in this work is we learn to ground ourselves. Just repeat a sound with me so that you tighten your muladhara, which is the anus, tighten it a little bit and pull it up and just feel that 
like a heat forming down there. And when you form this grounding with the sound of glom, 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 begins to heat up the base of your spine. And this begins to take control of all the four directions, all your traumas, all your past life issues. Everything starts to come under your control. And so by grounding, we release and begin to release an energy upwards in the spinal cord that then begins to open the third eye. This is why we do the grounding. It's very important. And so as you move up into the third eye, once you have established the grounding, do you then uh, keep that grounding? Uh, how, how do you start to work with opening the third eye while you're also um, maintaining awareness in a more grounded um, the lower chakras? Well, one of the best ways to think about opening the third eye is that you're opening a portal into a higher dimension of consciousness. And if you see it like that, rather than, oh, I have an inner eye that's just going to see everything and give me total laser vision. It's not that. It is that too. But it opens up an upward opening, and it is upward, that seems to allow me to almost fly. And, you know, one of the descriptions of a third eye opening in, in Kriya Yoga is called the Kachari, which means the Skywalker. Imagine that you're going to become a Skywalker. Now, do you really want to be, you know, an astronaut or a Skywalker without tethering yourself to the earth and grounding yourself in your body? This is the critical reason we do the grounding work, is that we ground ourselves in what is called the Shat Chakra, the six chakras. We ground ourselves in the five elements, earth, water, fire, air and space, akasha, and then we cut our heads off and start to fly into the ether. And this, there's a beautiful sound I want to share with you, that to feel what it is like to ground yourself and then release yourself upwards. It is the sound called ah-hum. Now try and say it with me, ah-hum, ah-hum. Now, ah is the earth element, ah, like an om, ah, the first sound. The next part is hum, hum, which is, I literally means I cut my head off, like Kali, you know that symbol of Kali cutting your head off? You cut your head off and you become ether, you become space. That means you become a skywalker. So to open the third eye, I must ground myself and tether myself in the world, Ah, and then home, let go and release myself to, we call it the divine mother. So we say, ah, hum, ah, hum, ah, hum. When you do this work, you're discovering the true nature of love. You know, because you, when you open these centers, it is the heart that opens to the head. And when you see the visions, it is the grace pours into you and fills your heart with so much bliss that you cannot help but give love in the world and compassion and kindness to the world. So even though you might develop wonderful siddhis or skills, like intuition or clairvoyance or clairsentience by opening the third eye. And I'll teach you all the techniques. The main thing is to open your heart. So before I show you the heart opening sequence, I want to share with you a simple technique to open and experience your third eye. Right? So one of the ways we do it is we rub our fingers on our third eye. And if you look up at the gap between the nose and the bridge of your eyebrows here, you start seeing a kind of swirling galaxy, almost maybe blue in color. And you start feeling this kind of swirling energy. And maybe a blue star will form or a swirling gray galaxy will form or something begins to happen here. Now, when you do that and you gaze up at it, the concentration on that point, and, and imagine that you're looking slightly ahead of you, in front of you, 
you want to visualize that as you breathe in, the cosmic jiva, the cosmic energy is pouring into you. Remember that portal at the top of your head? It's pouring into you. And the sound of that pouring into you is hum. Hum. And it's almost like an inhalation. <gasps> like that. Like a hum. And you say hum into you while gazing up at the third eye. And then bring it to your heart. And then turn it around. And let it out with the sound. Sa. Hum. Sa. Hum. Sa. Hum. Sa. So when we're doing the hamsa, what the scriptures like the Vigyan Bhairav Tantra, which is really the one that teaches the hamsa, says is that this portal is the gateway to that union of pure consciousness, Shiva, we call it. And it pours into us and embodies in us in every cell of our being. So we become Shiva in every cell of our being. And that when it becomes every cell of our being, it becomes an energy principle called Shakti, power. Shakti comes into us. And it comes and sits in the middle of our heart at the jiva, this ridhaya. Ridhaya is a wonderful word. It means the center of give and take. Isn't it nice? Center of give and take. In order to get love, you must give love. In order to get abundance, you must give abundance. It's a continuous give and take flow. You bring it down to Ridhaya. And in Ridhaya, an alchemical transmutation occurs. And hum becomes sa. And that releases back into the universe as cosmic energy. So I'm going hum, sa. So in the Vigyan Bhairav Tantra, this beautiful book that is the kind of manual to opening your third eye, it says that if you can breathe the hamsa 21,500 times a day, which is the amount of breaths a yogi takes, or even less, reduce the number of breaths per day, then you are completely in union between consciousness and body. And that means the sacred temple of your body, the heart opens, and consciousness reveals itself to you and you keep doing the dance. So sit with me for a second, gaze up into your third eye, hum into your heart, turn it around, let it out, sah, up the top of your head. Hum, sah, hum, sah, hum. So I'm going to give you a little glimpse of your third eye. And, and as you come to work with me on the program later, you will see deeper and deeper ways of doing this. But by rubbing your third eye and just put your little pinky finger at the little finger at the bottom of your eye and look up there, cover your head and then close your ears gently, the flap of your ears and just look up there. So the more you look up there, come back to me, the more you look up there, two things happen. One is that blue light begins to form into a circle or a star or a gray blob and you begin to see a star emerging. That's the beginning of your third eye opening. And the second thing is when you close your ears, a very fascinating thing happens. You begin to hear an inner sound, which begins to sound like an ohm. Oh, like that. And if you can get those two going, at first the sounds might be drum beats of your heart or waterfall or bells ringing, but after a while it becomes an ohm and you start seeing the blue circle, you're on your way. So there you go. Little couple of tricks I'm sharing with you today. <laughs> Beautiful. I love what you're sharing. So as this sort of blue star starts to open what do, how do you dive deeper into that and help to amplify that and use that as a portal you know there's a you know when we come to the threshold of all our known reality the 
the first thing that happens to us is we get terrified. So people call it Kundalini syndrome. People call it the dark night of the soul. You're going to collapse into, you don't know where you're going. Everything seems meaningless. Everything falls apart. The threshold, this tipping point that you're seeing, this portal, right, is actually pure love. And if you begin to look at it and ask it to guide you, ask it to pull you in, it will grow for you. It's almost like an intelligence on the other side looks like you and says, oh, you're trying to come this side. So let me pull you with my grace and love towards us, right? Something magical begins to happen. So that terror in ancient Tantra, that's called Bhairav. You know, that fierce ogre creature you see in Nepal and Bhutan, you know, Bhairav. That's, he's the gatekeeper of that vast shunya, void that you're going into. Now, because it's so terrifying and you come to the precipice of opening your third eye, it's kind of like a gradual portal that takes you through stages and stages of illumination and light until you begin to enter the portal. But ironically, when you enter the portal, you don't go out there. You go in here, into your heart. And so the actual portal this is the wonderful mystery I'll be sharing with you, is in your heart and you become a better human being. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something magical happens. That is wonderful. <laughs> it's also an important reframe where you're talking about things that appear to be quite scary are actually a face of love that's helping to uh, dissolve that which doesn't serve. That's really beautiful. And that's so relevant in our time today when we see so much political divide, so much fear of COVID, so much fear of whether we should go back to work in new ways or what we should do in the world. You know, we see, uh, you know, so much political autocracy forming around the world that we, we feel so uncertain and terrified of the future. And the same thing applies here, which is that if I can train myself to not become naively fearless, but fearless with higher purpose, with higher pull, with higher light, then when I act in the world through my heart, through my third eye, I actually act from that central balance and not drawn by the polarities that seem to divide the whole world. You know, mm. This is the beauty of this work, is to bring you back to the middle pillar. And this was known through Rosicrucianism, Hermeticism, Kabbalah, you know, Gnosticism. All these traditions have always taught that, which is Stoicism, which is that things will be good, things will be bad, but you have to sit in the middle between the polarities and see what is the opportunity for awakening and enlightenment for me? And then how can I be a better human being, a beacon of light in the world? And that's why we open the third eye. We want to become a beacon of light in the world. You know, we want to become a, a, a loving beacon that people will want to be near, want to share, want to feel, you know, that I too can be balanced without having to pull myself in one pole or the other, or, or one gender or the other, or one meaning or the other. I can stay in the middle. And then everything opens for me and I become a, a ray of light in the world. So the purpose is not to see the light alone, but to be the light. You know, that's what we're teaching. I'd just love to share a little bit about how to balance the sort of the, the, the time of deep inward practice, more maybe in the morning or the evening where you're sort of more isolated from the world. And then how do you then bring that middle pillar consciousness that being the light within a sometimes divisive or toxic circumstances in the outer world? And this is a very important question, Stephen, because every meditator knows that while it's perfectly all right to sit in a cocoon somewhere, whether in the Himalayas or in an apartment in New York, you can hide away in your little bubble cocoon and, and nothing will mess with you and you can meditate. But then you get out in the world and somebody is going to get at you. Somebody is going to harass you. Somebody is going to put pressure on you or, put, or express power on you. Um, so the, there's a classic teaching. talks about 112 ways to live meditation through your day, right? And it's very simple practices that while I am somewhere in the park or on the bus or on the train, just stare at one spot and through that one place, fill my heart with bliss and travel into the void. You know, look at a person in front of you and see yourself in them, become them. Go into their minds, into their hearts, become one with them. When you're sitting with nature, see nature speaking to you, talking to you. 
And when you're eating food in Tantra, they say yoga is bhoga, right? And it's, it's a very funny term. And I don't know if you've heard it, but yoga, you know, everybody knows is uh, aligning myself with the higher cause, right? But bhoga is to eat and enjoy life fully, right? So can I enjoy life fully, bhog? eating, dancing, making love, drinking wine, everything can be a tool to awakening as well, according to this tradition. So that means even while I'm eating something delicious, like that chocolate cake or that beautiful meal, at, at a moment comes when I'm in that moment of pure delight, that awakening can occur. And I detach from it all and I realize who I really am that vast consciousness behind everything. What the morning and evening rituals do is like core training before going on a marathon. And what the day does is becoming the observer, watching yourself having those experiences and realizing, aha, that's a wake up. Aha, look at that. When we look at the world in that way of transmutation, of observation, Living 24 hours a day in that state of higher consciousness becomes easier and easier and easier, and we get really good at it, you know. Then nothing begins to affect us after a while. <laughs> so I know that you wanted to dive into a few other practices here, so I think this would be a good time for people to settle in and, uh, and really receive the beach mantra. In Shakti tradition, there are 10 beach mantras. Um, Aim, Hreem, Shreem. Kleem, Kreem, Stream, Dream, Hum, and Halim. We're not going to go into all of them. You will experience them in the deeper courses I, I will teach with you. But the, if I take any one of them and I repeat it, right, then something alchemical begins to happen to me. So the one way is to, I go into tranquility, mindfulness, stillness, and then I chant a mantra. Then it has power. But what if I wanted to enter the state of mindfulness and tranquility using a mantra? That too works. Let's take a mantra like Shreem. Shreem. And just close your eyes. Put your mind on your heart chakra. The heart chakra. And you will perceive a golden light forming all around you as you chant Shreem. So we'll just do it a few times. Just start with me. Shreem. Shri Shri And now we begin to play with them. I'm Shri Shri Isn't that nice? Try it. I'm Shri Shri I'm Shri Shri and now look up at your third eye. Home. 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 Sometimes just vibrating an um sound, the brummery can open the third eye. Just by gazing up there. Mm. Or oh, the Om sound, the full Om. Ah, ooh, mm. Oh. 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 So I want to take you somewhere. Stay in this state. Stay with your eyes closed, gazing up at your third eye with the OM sound, feeling deeply relaxed. By now, your heart rate is slowing down, your breath is slowing down, you're feeling a tranquility. OM, HRIM, SHRIM, just relaxing. I'm HRIM, SHRIM, I'm HRIM, SHRIM. And now gazing up at your third eye, imagine that you're in a beautiful, sacred garden. The most beautiful garden you can imagine. Soft grass under your feet, blue skies, trees all around. In fact, you're in a garden in a valley in the Himalayas, let's say. Mountains all around you. Blue sky, cool air touching your skin. 
fresh smell of flowers, birds chirping sounds. Everything around you is alive and beautiful. This is your sacred garden. This is, you're going to remember this place every time. And we're going to climb up from my sacred garden to my sacred white monastery in my third eye. So feel the cool breeze. Now step into the pond next to you. There's a beautiful pond. Step into the stream, the pond, and feel the cool water from the earth to the water. Then feel the heat of the sun touching your face and feel the heat rising as fire up your spine. Then you go, keep going up and you climb the hill, the mountains, you go up the valley and you suddenly come in the distance, you see this beautiful white monastery. Think of the tiger's nest in Bhutan, like a beautiful white monastery on the hill and you're going towards it. And I want you to come with me. We travel up the hill, feeling cool air on our face and we climb up and we come to this gateway and there's a staircase going up and there's a guardian at the gateway. Somebody you know, some an, an angel or a figure or an ancestor, somebody you love dearly is guiding you into this wonderful place. Acknowledge them, look, see them right there on your right side. They're beautiful. And together, let's go up the stairs, climb the 33 steps, ready? And we float up the stairs to the 33 steps, one, all the way up. We're floating together, holding the hand of our guide. And we come to the top and we're in this beautiful white hall of pillars, white in every direction. And way in the distance, I see a golden light. So I go towards the golden light with my guide. And as I go in towards the light, I see a giant, beautiful crystal with a light golden linga inside it, shining away. And my guide points to it and says, look, see yourself, see your higher self, see your future in that golden crystal. And so open your third eye and look into that crystal. So I stand at the crystal and I look in front of me at the golden lights. And I look into the crystal and I see a vivid image. My higher self is showing me a magical truth that I've been waiting to hear an answer to. Something you've wanted, something you've needed, something you've been asking yourself about. The answer is coming now. You can see it clearly like a vivid movie playing right there in front of you and feel that beautiful light and experience it now. The answer is clear. Your higher self is speaking to you. And this place I want you to remember, you can go back there anytime and ask any question you like. So let us pull back and thank your guide for showing you this beautiful vision and pull back through the hall of pillars, down the steps, Thank your guide and leave through the gate down the hill, back to your sacred garden through the water and come back to your sacred garden and come to your heart center and say, Mother, I have seen this vision and this answer. I now surrender it to you at my heart and whatever will be, you will make it happen. It has already happened and the answer is clear. Hmm. So I release it in my heart. And I'll take a deep breath and say, tighten your bum and say, Aham. 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 And relax completely. You can rub your hands and rub your eyes and your face and mm -hmm. feel it. But every time you want to go back to your sacred third eye and ask a question, Take this journey. Part of the point of the third eye is to crystallize that vision of in consciousness and then to trust in the manifestation. It sounds like we don't have to effort our way to it necessarily. Well, I think that people sometimes misunderstand what surrender means. Surrender does not mean to bow your head and give up. Surrender means to see a higher vision and then realize that you can't do it alone. And so you need divine grace and assistance in making it happen. So you got to get out of the way so that that grace can flow through you. 
and it flows through you through the heart into everything you do. I want to circle back a little bit more on the sort of the science of this and how these different visualizations and, and different beach mantras and sound patterns to help to entrain our consciousness into that higher frequency of realized awareness. And I think that what we're seeing with neuroscience is that there are three main circuits that seem to go on with this work. Um, first is the idea of the vagus nerve and the cerebrospinal fluid. It, that's why Kriya breathing and breathing techniques that go from the lower spine, pumping it up to the neck and over the head, trigger Kundalini awakening. That is a clear connection between cerebrospinal fluid and the vagus nerve and those activations. And that takes control of my endocrine system, my parasympathetic nervous system, and brings my body under control, right? The second stage is that if I push the energy up into my head, it comes through the back of my head. And, what, and the yogis used to call it the hamsa, the swan, the swan that spreads its wings, you know, right there, which is identical to this area of the occipital lobe and the medulla back here. You know, it's like a, and what happens there is that the first hack that occurs is in the occipital lobe in the back. So we start to see visionary states. We release, the pineal gland kicks in. We start to release and see patterns and geometries, just like in LSD or in psychedelics. We start to see patterns. We start to see colors. We start to see a light. We start to see triangles. We, angelic beings come to us. And this is, so visionary states are a first stage always in hallucinatory experiences and in third eye awakening through Kriya and Mantra and Tantra, right? And so the correlationships are wonderful. And then as you go deeper, the entire midbrain shuts down. And when the midbrain shuts down, that's what we now know as mindfulness, which is my theta waves, everything becomes calm. I become extremely tranquil. And, and something wonderful happens, a dissolution begins to happen, right? And that dissolution, eh, you know, science calls it gamma radiation. It's kind of like a dissolution of yourself, your self identity vanishes. And then me, my dualities all start dissolving. And that's the next stage of the third eye experience is that I don't exist anymore. I'm dissolving into a kind of wonderful vortex. And then what happens with the tantric condition is that it comes back into the heart and re-triggers the vagus nerve and becomes bliss consciousness in everything. So just look at that circuit. You go from body control to opening the mind to stilling the mind completely, bliss pours in, visionary states stop, and you experience pure bliss. So we're looking at the neuroscience a little bit and can we do other things? Can we achieve happiness? Can we achieve abundance? Can we achieve wellness? Can we achieve all these magical states by these mantras and beach mantras? So intention becomes the next stage. And that's what I'll be working with you on the course with. Well, what a powerful synthesis. This is a good moment to talk more about your upcoming program. And first, we just want to say how grateful we are that you're doing this program for the Shift Network. It's called Open Your Third Eye. Tap into the ultimate source of peace, intuition, and bliss and become a living light in the world. And the foundational teachings and understandings that we've shared here today and takes it deep into practice so that it becomes a lived reality for you. You can find the, the URL, uh, the whole course laid out at openingyourthirdeye.com, openingyourthirdeye.com. It's going to be a nine-week program, so a bit of a deeper dive than our typical seven-week program, but this is to allow you the time to unfold the practices and really activate all of the different levels of what Raja is going to be teaching and initiating you into. There's no prerequisites for this program. It really is if you have a, a curiosity, a yearning, a sense of knowing in your body, mind, that you want to experience these higher states and access the visionary potential to open the circuits for more love and bliss in your life. And you want to go further. So Raja, I'd love for you to share in your own words about, you know, why take this journey with you? And then let's I'll read out the module titles. You can give us a little sneak preview. In this age, people are not seeking a divine other. They are seeking inner power, inner technologies, inner hacks, inner skills that can give them, for want of a better word, superpowers. What I'd like to do is to take you on a journey 
that starts with the dance of Shiva and Shakti, this cosmic alignment that I'm talking about, right? But then come back to earth and take you step by step by step from earth to the third eye and then back to the heart. So I'm going to take you over the nine modules into those stages of experience, right? And I want you to come with me. All of them will give you experiences. Your kundalini will rise through it. And you will also experience this wonderful, palpable sense of achieving more than you thought you were capable of. More powers, more intuitive skills, more bliss, more happiness, more everything becomes better the more we do this work. Mm -hmm. So let us look at it as nine steps to your best potential kind of inner self-awakening, you know? I would like to look at it that way. Well said. So module one, the tantric and yogic paths to opening the third eye. So this is what I call the Shiva Shakti path. You know, we talked about the Vigyan Bharatantra and the dance of Shiva and Shakti above your head. We're going to look at the origins and the teachings of this vibrational, that the entire universe is a vibrating frequency and we need to tune in to 36 levels of vibration. I'm going to talk about that in some detail. Good. Module two, the vibrating energy universe, prana and the 36 tattvas. So once you've understood that the energy, that the universe is an energetic vibrating principle that I can tune into, how do I bring it into my body? How do I achieve energy states, prana states that make me a beacon of energy to be attracting into me from nature, from the sun, from exercises, from breathing, all that, I will teach you how to do that. Module three, shut up to wake up. <laughs> so the, the key then becomes is that we're calming the body down. We're stopping the chattering mind down. How do we do that? You know, and these using mantra and breathing techniques, I will teach you to go calmer and calmer and calmer until you're the observer and you say, oh my God, I can observe. I can see myself reacting. I can see myself acting. I can see myself doing. I can see myself being. This is, I'm going to teach you how to shut up, to wake up. Module four, the power of inner listening, inner seeing, and inner sensing. So one of the teachings of the tantric way is what is called uh, antarmukhi, inner listening. I'm going to teach you techniques to listen by closing your ears, by listening to the inner 10 indriyas, the 10 sounds that come. And once you understand the sounds, the higher you go towards the third eye, the more you can use those sounds or mantras to awaken and open the third eye. So I'm going to teach you all about that. Module five, Brahma's cave, Tarini and the Skywalker. So we get to the head. We're in the midbrain. We're in the pineal gland. We're in that space. And that space is called Brahma's cave. And the star is a goddess called Tara. Tarini in Buddhist tradition and in Shaivism and Hinduism tradition. So I'm going to teach you how to be a sky walker by going to Brahma's cave and doing the Shiva Shakti things. Module six, Lalita, Tripura Sundari and the power of Shakti's grace. We're transmuting desire, sexual energy, bhoga, all the desires into awakening. So Lalita Tripura Sundari sits above your head pouring the nectar of desire into you. So she is the seductress. She is going to wake you up to your highest consciousness. Module seven, conversations with the void, the dance of Shiva and Shakti. Okay, so now you've got to that star beyond. You've, you're pulled up and you're at the tipping point. You're at that edge of Bhaira, the scary, traumatic edge. And guess what? You and I are going to hold hands and we're going to jump right in. Module eight, the art and magic of the white monastery. So once I am there, how do I create a place that I can use every day in my life, a sanctuary, a place of my own? How do I create an inner world? The ancients used to call this world Shambhala, right? Shambhavopaya, the world of Shambho, the world of where the crystal city in my head, the, the city of Tripura Sundari, this city, I'm going to teach you how to navigate the city and work with it so that you can begin to have an inner dialogue that helps you in your path to powers, to managing your life, to opening and to becoming a better human being. 
And finally, module nine, Shreem and the power of manifestation through absolute surrender. So now we've got all these hacks and techniques, but the secret to true third eye abundance and opening and becoming is surrender. So we're going to learn how to deeply just go deep, deep, deep into surrender together. Well, what an extraordinary offering. And I just know not only is this profound and initiatory, but it's also a lot of fun because you're very playful as a teacher. And I know that people just have a great time in your program. So there's a lightness of being that shines through. So again, the whole program is laid out in detail at openingyourthirdeye.com. You get the nine weeks and a few other things about the program. You, this includes time to interact, ask questions, but you get recordings, both video and audio. So you can keep going back to the practices and the teachings and the transmissions. You also get word-for-word -word transcripts of every session to work with, study, and highlight. There's weekly exercises and practices. There's a Facebook learning community. And there's some very uh, beautiful extra bonuses as well to enhance your journey. There's five sessions from the Ancestral Healing Summit. There's a curated sessions. There's conversations with the void ebook excerpts from Raja and a book that he's been developing. And also a brand new dialogue with Raja and Jay Sanguinetti on the neuroscience of mantra breath and the third eye, which you mentioned a little bit earlier that you're working with the University of Arizona on some research there. You want to share anything about that bonus? We've um, had a good conversation that we're sharing with you, with Jay, who is our professor and co-head of the Center for Consciousness Studies at the University of Arizona in Tucson, and where we're going to talk about why sound alters consciousness and what happens to the brain, you know, and, and we go deep into that dialogue and it'll be fun for you, I think. Special bonus is available only until midnight tonight, and this is actually a really robust bonus. We did a summit called the Awaken Your Kundalini Summit, working with Kundalini, multiple facets, not only Raja's teaching, but also many of the top pioneers and experts in Kundalini around the world. And that package of sessions and transcripts is available to you when you sign up by midnight tonight. You want to share anything about that summit, Raja? The step-by-step -step awakening of consciousness through the body is best described as a kundalini awakening because it goes through the chakras it goes through the kramas it takes you through the inner spine and it awakens these centers which we call goddesses and so my work is deeply driven by the the inner goddess awakening that comes from kundalini shakti so i think it's a worthwhile investment to look at all the different strands of kundalini yoga and what it means and and i think you will enjoy that there's a lot of value it's gonna be a profound journey and we kept the investment really accessible it's just three payments of 146 dollars or save 10 percent when you pay in full with one payment of 397 so the course is going to start February 2nd and run Wednesdays, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. But even if you can't make those live times, you can still get the full value by participating with the recordings and the community and really doing the practices is where the heart of this is. So I love also reading through testimonials. Raja's taught a number of very successful and beloved programs at Shift. Some of the previous participants said, my being has become joy and bliss. I would wholeheartedly recommend this course to anyone who wants to go in depth with their understanding take takes you on a journey to the deepest part of yourself and help you see the truth really extraordinary testimonials of those who have gone on previous journeys with raja i know you're in for a treat and you're in great hands with raja and you can find all the details at opening your third eye.com and third is spelled out opening your third eye.com and you get the special bonus of the awaken your kundalini summit when you sign up by midnight tonight so thank you for offering, offering this wisdom here today. And thank you all for joining us. And if you would like to go further with Raja, you're in good hands and you're warmly welcome to do so at openingyourthirdeye.com and you get the Awaken Your Kundalini Summit when you sign up by midnight tonight. Thank you. Thank you.